Hey there, Scipio here. In this video, I wanna talk about my battery and the fact that it is dead. That's right, Overclocked has a dead battery. Actually, a cell has gone bad, and I'll show you what tells me that here in just a second. But So I've kind of been going through this process of trying to figure out what I wanted to replace the battery with. So before I talk about what battery I got and why, and, uh, and thank you guys, I called out for help um, earlier today to, uh, to sort of get a feel for what people were thinking uh, but before I get to that, let me show you a little bit about what's going on with this particular battery. All right, so here it is in all of its glory. Um, you know, I did the obvious things like double check and make sure all of my connections are good. Uh, that's all good. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about parasitic amp draw, uh, which I will test um, after I get this battery replaced. But you really can't test parasitic amp draw on a battery that's less than fully charged because things behave differently uh, depending on the battery's charge. So uh, this stock battery, this is uh, stock when I bought it. All right, so take a look at this battery. First thing I wanna show you, uh, something interesting I found here. This is made by Johnson Controls Battery Group out of Milwaukee. Now, here's a uh, fact that you will find interesting. Johnson Controls is the same company that makes, drum roll please, Optima batteries. So those of you that are huge fans of Optima, yellow top, red top, uh, which seems to be the majority, um, this is made by the same company. This is the OEM battery for uh, the Jeep Wrangler. So that's kind of interesting. It's got 600 cold cranking amps, 120-minute uh, reserve capacity, 70 amp hour, and I don't know what the EN figure is. There is a thing called European Norms, which is a different standard. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to tell you. I have no idea, um, and I don't see that EN value represented in other batteries. So if you know what that is, uh, comment below and let me know because I'm now I'm really curious. So anyway, uh, that's this battery. Let me put a uh, a meter on this, and I'll show you what I'm getting right now for voltage. All right, so I've got this set for. Uh, DC voltage, and I'm gonna check here. I'm getting 10.3 volts, and that's how it was. It's been sitting at 10 plus volts for a long time. When I checked it this morning about, I don't know, six, seven hours ago, maybe even longer, uh, it was not very far away from here. So this is sort of the normalized uh, state um, including any current draw I have coming out of the vehicle right now. The vehicle is, you know, it's still connected. Um, that is after charging with both a battery charger and, uh, and then eventually, um, I still had to drive this thing around yesterday. I uh, was getting about 11, uh, maybe 11.4 volts um, at, uh, at its max like charge state um, as I'm driving around, but then quickly drops after the vehicle turns off, right? Because the alternator stops putting current to it. Um, realizing the alternator is not designed to charge the battery, you guys, I get it. But when you have to jumpstart your vehicle and drive it, um, it does top it off. Whether we like it or not, it will uh, raise the voltage back up, usually to normal. Uh, in this case, with the battery charger or even with the alternator, there's nothing I can do to get this thing um, up to 12 volts, which tells me one of these cells is bad and uh, 10 volts uh, is also a pretty good indicator of that. So again, 10.3 uh, volts, that is a, uh, is a bad battery. So let me show you what I'm gonna put into this. Ugh. All right, here we go. The Die Hard Advanced Gold, uh, this is an AGM battery. Um, I spent an incredible amount of time trying to figure out which battery I was gonna go with, um, partly to see what was the best, right? I, I queried Facebook, I queried you guys on YouTube, um, got a lot of great advice. And again, it's funny how polarizing uh, this topic is. There's a lot of brand loyalty when it comes to things like batteries. The Optima people are die hard, Optima, Optima, Opto, you know, yellow top, red top. Um, then there's the uh, Odyssey people, and, uh, and, and those guys are pretty passionate. And then there's the uh, Intersys and the, you know, the, and there's diehard people. Um, there's all these people who are sort of loyal to brands. Uh, what's fascinating is many people don't know exactly why they're loyal to brands. Um, 
and, uh, and others are very passionate about the fact that their brand is the best. Now, Optima people are even more so uh, just super passionate about the fact that the Optima is the best battery in the world, hands down, no question. Um, but for as many of those people there are, there's probably two people that will say that Odyssey is no longer what it used to be. It is not the greatest. You're buying the brand. Uh, it's way overhyped. And so it makes buying decisions really hard, especially for people like me. I'm trying to do this on a budget. Uh, so one of the things I had to look at was uh, what was a really good battery, but also what was a really good battery for the money. Um, I could go buy an Odyssey and know I'm probably getting the best battery. Um, does that get me anything more for an extra $150 over what I'm getting with this? And that's what I don't know, right? Um, but, uh, and, and, and there's, there were a lot of opinions that were actually really um, helpful in that you should just buy whatever the best batteries you can get from a local auto parts store because uh, for a warranty perspective, if you have to return or exchange one, um, they're all over the country. So if you ever run into a problem, it'll be easy to find an AutoZone or an Advance Auto. Um, Sears is kind of that way, although arguably Sears is sort of declining uh, and there's, uh, there's worry that they're going to shut down eventually and then who's going to support uh, the warranty on this diehard battery. And that's a risk that I'm taking, obviously, because I have a diehard. I come a little bit old school where diehard was sort of a well-known brand. Now the diehard platinums uh, were, um, were basically rebranded Odyssey batteries and they had a really good reputation. Um, but then again, they also had a lot of problems. They ended up discontinuing that brand. This is sort of their high-end model now. Their flagship is the Advanced Gold um, AGM. This is actually made, I did a lot of research. This is actually made by East Penn, which makes the DECA AGM Intimidator. And the Intimidator is a very well-regarded battery. Um, and they actually, uh, East Penn uh, is an OEM supplier for several other batteries. So like I think a CarQuest, um, Platinum, AGM, or maybe even some of the other like AutoZone or Advanced Auto, their AGM batteries are probably gonna be something like this, like an East Penn. Um, but they make the Advanced Gold Die Hard and made in the USA, they have uh, a, a great reputation. So well, whether or not there's a better battery out there, I would say that there are probably brands that will endure more extreme torture than I'm probably gonna give this battery. Um, and they also come at a very high premium. Uh, there were a couple of batteries I looked at where I thought, oh, that's it, that's clearly the best, but you know, do I wanna spend $300 um, when I can get this one and I did on sale for $150. Uh, so $150 battery, I think this is a really good choice. But anyway, so that's it, the Die Hard Advanced Gold. This is what I went with. I would love to go to a dual battery um, situation right now, but I just don't have the money because uh, to do it right, it costs a lot more than just two batteries because you have this complicated circuitry that you have to add, uh, plus a new battery tray. You gotta move some things around. I just don't have time or money for that right now. So this is it, the Die Hard. So I'm gonna get this installed and uh, hopefully this fixes my problems. And if not, well, uh, I've got some more work to do. So after I do get this installed, I will be doing some parasitic amp draw testing just to see how much draw is coming uh, through my system. Now I run a dash camera that has a parking mode, so it's constantly recording uh, in a state of the vehicle being off, um, but it does have a low voltage cutoff. I have it set fairly conservatively, so uh, it will stop fairly soon. Uh, I do have an alarm system now. I have a uh, Android radio that might be consuming some voltage. So it would be nice to kind of figure out exactly where that voltage is coming from. What could have killed the battery I have in this Jeep now is I left the vehicle sitting for several days uh, without using it, which is pretty rare for me. So in that period of time, uh, the battery may have just drained enough that that cell finally went and, uh, and it was done for. Um, but that could be a symptom of a different problem, right? It could be could be I have something draining and I just, I keep using the vehicle enough that it sort of masks that problem because the alternator will top off the charge and then I let it sit for a while and then the, mass, the alternator will top off that charge. So if I don't top off that charge and just let it drain, well, that's where we run into some problems. So this being a new battery, of course it has a, uh, I think it's a four year, 
I have to double check. It's either a three or four year, uh, no prorated, just replace warranty. Um, so hopefully uh, I won't have any problems here. It is 760 cranking amps, which is quite a bit more. Uh, so I should have some more power. The reserve capacity is the same and the amp hours is the same, you know, 120 and 70. Um, anyway, that's it. I uh, just wanted to share that with you. Thanks for everybody who responded uh, to my request for a battery. I was really looking for somebody to say, oh yeah, uh, you can get a whatever, you know, uh, Acme widget battery for 50% off this weekend because of Black Friday. Um, nobody really threw that at me. Um, nobody could, you know, point me to a place where I could get an Optima battery at a super great deal, uh, which I would have probably done it just, you know, to try them out, um, or an Odyssey battery for that matter. Uh, so I ended up still sort of struggling with this 150 to 175 dollar range, and all of those batteries are fairly similar, probably even made by mostly the same people. Like I said, East Penn, and uh, this one was 150 out the door. So I say, guys, that is me installing a new battery into Overclocked. A little bit unexpected, but hey. It is what it is. Sometimes you don't get to choose the timing. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or other suggestions. But right now, $150 battery made by Eastern Penn seems to be the right way to go for me. Um, doesn't mean I'm not going to change things up in the future. I still would like to do a two battery system. Just now is not the time. So uh, anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.